Hi there, crafty friends. Welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa and today I thought we would make a really easy card using Alta News Treasured Memories Stamp, Die, and Stencil Set. I'm trying to make sure there's no glare on here. This is a very large floral image and you get quite a few really nice sentiments in here but I thought today we would do it as a sympathy card and just make it really simple. So in a side you get a ton of ideas and they also show you how to layer the stencils but it's really pretty easy. They have uh, more than one portion of the flower on each stencil and it is really easy to use. I will show you that when we get there and then we've got the die set and I love that the die set has dies for these sentiments. That is always one of my favorites. So I've got it all set up here in my Misty and we are just going to, oh, that's not gonna fit. Let's turn it this way. We are just going to stamp, but we want to make sure that that is in there because we are gonna put this back and stamp it in black once we're done. So I'm using all Pink Fresh inks. This is Metropolis, and I don't need this to be perfect. We are just doing this to get the image on there so we can stencil. So let's get our image on there. And this card was so, so simple. And you know what, they have, examples in the little fold out that you get with the stamp set. And I'm basically doing one of their examples. It's just so easy. I was in a hurry, didn't have a lot of time for creati creativity, and I just wanted to do something really simple. I will have everything listed and linked in the description below. I am just placing this on my sticky mat there. And then my stencils are right here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but they are all numbered and they are numbered in groups. So this is one, this is A1, and this is A2. We're going to start with one and that's this flower here. They line up really, really simple. And it is quite a bit of ink blending. It does take a little bit of time, so I probably won't show all of it, but it is really nice to have a sticky mat. And I also do quite a bit of masking just because I don't want to get ink where it shouldn't be. So we are going to start with our purples. I've got hydrangea and opulence. And we are going to start with the hydrangea and always tap off so you don't get a really harsh line. And we're just going to add a little bit of color there. And then we will bring in our opulence and we will add more color at the base because this also has a detail stencil. You'll see that next. But I want to, I want my flowers to be just a little bit deeper and darker than even that other stencil is going to give me. So I'm just adding both colors to the base of the flower, just like that. And this is really simple. Let's wipe that off. Then we can reposition. So now this is still stencil one and we are moving on to the A1 part. And that is right here. It's different than a regular stencil where you do everything where, it, as, how do I say it? Whereas the image would be all one. So this is a little bit different. I'm going to mask that there so I don't get ink on there. And also here, 
Same thing, we're just going to start with our hydrangea. Add a little bit of color in there. I just want to make sure I get those tips colored. Then we can bring in our opulence. And we're just going to add it a little deeper towards the base of the flowers. So I was kind of in a funk, not really a funk. I, uh, I just didn't have a lot of time this week, it feels like. And I just couldn't think of anything. I, so I thought, well, you know what? Let's just do something really, really simple. And this card is beautiful when it's done. It does take a little bit of time what with the ink blending, but it comes out so pretty. And you just throw a sentiment on there and it looks amazing. So now we can bring this same number one stencil again, but it's now the section for A2. And we are going to line that up. Make sure that is on your sticky mat and not going anywhere. Mask anything. You might be afraid of getting ink on. And then we're going to bring in our opulence. And this is where we're going to add that darker shadow. Anyways, it's a super easy card. Does not really need very much instruction or explaining, but I thought you might enjoy the process. I love opulence. This color is so pretty. It is just the deepest, darkest purple. And just get in all those little nooks and crannies, just like that. And there you go. We have one set of flower done already. And that is so pretty. I just love that. So I will go ahead and move on to stencil number two. And I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing because I'm doing it exactly like I did the other flower. But I will show a little bit of it. So there I've got that second flower ink blended. And I am going to put my stencil on there. But I wanted to show you the center of the flower is not masked. So these stencils are etched. So you can see the outline of the flower. and the center of that flower is not masked. So if I were to use my opulence here and do my accents, the center of my flower would end up dark purple. But I don't want that to happen because I am going to color it a different color. So let's mask that off. And I've already got a little mask here that I cut out. And we're just going to mask that before we ink blend because I want the center of my flower to be a different color. So now we can take our opulence, make sure you tap off and be careful while you tap off because I did tap off close to that open area in a different one and I got ink where I didn't want it. So just be aware of where you're tapping off. All right, so let's get our stencil off of there. And that is beautiful. And we are using dye inks, which means they will lighten up a little. And there we go. There's the center of our flower. It was perfectly masked. And that is looking beautiful. All right, so now we can move on to Stencil number three, and stencil number three is going to be our larger leaves here. We've got our smaller ones and then our larger leaves. Stencil number two is our larger leaves, although there is one, one little portion of a larger leaf on stencil number four, but we'll get there. We're going to get that on there. And for the larger leaves, I'm using olive and evergreen, but I am going to do the same thing. I am going to use my olive first and then my evergreen to kind of fill in the middle. Let's make sure we mask. There is a lot of masking on here just to be safe. 
And I think one more over here. So I've got that little group of leaves done. We can now move on to this other set of leaves. Super simple. It is a little time consuming, but not too terribly bad. And I just love the look of stencils. And there we go. We've got the majority of our green done on the larger leaves, except for this little section here, which is on our next stencil. But let's do the middle of our flower, which is on stencil three. So we're just going to find where that lines up. It's really pretty simple. And for that, I am using citron and bay leaf. I wanted it to be a little bit yellow, but not a bright yellow. So we're just going to add those. First, we're adding our citron, and that looks pretty bright. So then I brought in a little bit of bay leaf, and I'm just going to darken that up just a little bit, but I didn't want it as dark as bay leaf by itself, which is why I put the citron on underneath there. And then we can bring in our accent pieces and do that with a heavy hand of bay leaf. And that's perfect. I think that looks great. All right, so now we can move on to stencil number four. And stencil number four also colors our little berries there. So we need to make sure that we mask. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are separations here in the stencil. So this is section one. And I'm just starting with that one because that's what I saw first. We're going to line that up. And for my berries, I am going to be using opulence. And for my leaves, I'm going to use key lime and olive. But we need to make sure that we mask because see this open stencil here is pretty darn close. And I don't want to get ink in another area. Even though we're going to die cut it, I don't want to get ink there just because you never know if it's going to show up or not. I should have put a mask there, but I didn't. I was trying to be careful. So we've got our little berries there done. So now we can mask the berries, although it's probably not necessary because that's pretty darn dark. And we can move on to our key lime and our olive. Key lime is a pretty bright green. And I love this green, but I do want to soften it just a little bit with the olive. So it's not so dark or so bright. I'm sorry. Just like that. And then we've got shading too. Isn't that pretty? I love the look that you can get with stencils. Okay, moving on to this next group. Again, we want to make sure that we mask. And this is where that little area from the large leaf comes in. So let's do that first. And we used olive and then evergreen. And I don't think I'm even going to need to put more ink on my brush there. Nope, that looks like it should match pretty well. Now we've got that little spot colored in. And we can put this mask right there to do our opulence. 
And we are almost done with this stencil. We've just got this little section here. And the way they've got these all positioned on here and they line up perfect, it could not be easier. They really thought of everything here. Isn't that pretty? I just love the purples. I never used to be a purple kind of gal. Pink was always my favorite, but I do like a good purple. So let's get everything out of the way. So now we need to stamp this again. And when we stamp this, the whole thing is going to come to life. Those, that outline will just be beautiful. So for this, I am bringing in Memento. And we are just going to darken up that outline. just like that and that just brings that whole image to life that is so pretty you know i have a press tool i just don't use it all right isn't that beautiful oh my goodness that just pops that is so pretty so I will go ahead and clean this stamp later. Now we need to die cut this and we've got the coordinating die. It's really, really easy to line up. Isn't that beautiful? I just love those colors. They look so nice. So now we can go ahead and we can start assembling. I've got my card base here and I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half. I just trimmed off maybe an eighth of an inch on each side. And what I wanna do now is I've already got my sentiment pre-done. I white heat embossed on black, sending love and strength. And I just want to figure out where I can place my image here and get the most out of it. So I think that looks pretty good like that. I'm not going to glue down my sentiment yet, but I think that's looking pretty darn good. I want to use the most of my flowers. I want to get everything out of that image that I can. So I think right there is good. I'm just going to hold that in place, flip it over, draw, a little line where I need to cut on the back here and we can trim. I'm just going to take long scissors and trim. And when you use long scissors like that, it basically just ensures that you get a straight line without having to put it in your trimmer. And I think that will look perfect. I am going to add foam tape behind my image here. So I've got my foam tape back behind there, but I did not remove it yet because I want to bring in my hydrangea. And we are going to add a little bit of ink blending behind there. So I'm just going to look where this falls. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow back behind there, just to give it a little more personality. Just like that. I think that's probably pretty good. Now we can take our release paper off and attach this. And I did put quite a bit of foam tape on there but that's just who I am. I want to make sure that it does not sag anywhere. Then we can carefully place this just like that. And then if you wanted to, you could also bring in your leftover pieces. I wonder if we should do that. Should we put that over there? That might be pretty. That might be real pretty. 
Hmm. I think I like that better. I like this kind of open. What do you think? Hmm. I think if we just use that upper portion, that might be really nice. Okay, let me go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and I added this extra piece up here. I put foam tape behind it. I also added my sentiment. And now we can go ahead and add this to a card base. We're just going to get that centered. Oh, and I put foam tape behind this because I want to have a nice layer there. And that came out so cute. Now all we have to do is embellish. And I am using the Enchanted Garden Enamel Dots. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few of these, but I want to make sure I use this little heart in there. Because this is like a sympathy card, I want to put that little heart on there. And I think that just looks super cute. We'll just throw in a few embellishments and then we will be done. This was so easy. That is so cute and so easy. I just love this extra large floral image from Altenew. And I did do another one. I did I did a sample, my first one, and I used Pink Fresh Peony and what was that? I think it's Coral Reef and Peony. And it just reminded me too much of Christmas. So that's why I thought we would do a purple one today. And I love how that came out. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.